Hello, hello, Jeff Elvin here with Balan Brands, and today I wanted to talk about whether we should or should not use the Impress plugin, which is the plugin provided by IDX Broker to help integrate IDX into our WordPress websites. So we get this question from time to time, and it used to be that the plugin added a lot of overhead to websites. Uh, meaning it would take longer load time if you had a lot of widgets that you had built in the IDX broker admin, then it would take you know longer for those pages to load. So um, at, at one point, we definitely recommended against really ever installing the IDX broker plugin. However, in the new versions of WordPress and new versions of the plugin, we see a lot more seamless integration and we now answer that question with having the IDX Broker plugin or the Impress plugin, I should say, installed it can definitely be a good thing. However, there's still a couple tweaks that we recommend you make, uh, maybe not using the plugin. So I'm gonna go through those here for us today. So um, first off, when we integrate IDX Broker, we are a developer partner, the Lori Ballin team, and what we do is we actually integrate IDX Broker services um, into your website. So by default, what IDX Broker has is a little more plain and generic. So what we do is we help get the plugin installed, we get the advanced search widget that we style and add here for you, and then we also will style your actual property widgets that are built so that they look more integrated into the website. So um, when we do this, there is in IDX Broker, uh, I'm sorry, in WordPress, again, under plugins, you can add the Impress plugin. So you'll see in this sample here, we already have that installed. Now there's a number of things here that you can configure, initial settings, Omnibar would be if you just want the single bar search address, which some customers like, although we do find that even though that's common on Zillow and other third parties, we do get good traction on the broken up boxes that we install here that we configure. But if you are looking for the Omnibar option, which is the single bar search bar, then we can configure settings in here. There's also what's called the wrappers, and the wrappers is what makes the rest of the website appear on IDX Broker's pages, the pages that are actually fed from IDX Broker. Um, so it's not unusual to you know, click here, go to wrappers, click add wrapper, and then go ahead and do that. However, what we find is that IDX Broker uses uh, a post type. They install a, a, a custom post type. And so what happens is, is a lot of the IDX pages themselves when we're looking at those, they actually have like the publish date, who published it, what the date it was published, and that, that looks more like a blog post. It doesn't really look like our pages themselves. So if I go to give you an example here, balanvegas.com, and I click on, let's say, Las Vegas, and we have you know, our different information here. So this is a you know styled IDX widget, but if I click on this, now it takes me over to the subdomain, which is an IDX broker page. So this, because we have a wrapper installed, we've got the, the Vegas header, and then of course at the bottom we've got the Vegas footer, and then this is what is fed from IDX broker itself. Now, in order to make that happen, however, we did not use this wrapper, because as I was just saying, if we use the wrapper that's built into the plugin, it would put it and make it look more like an actual blog post. So let me open a page here. Um, so if I went to a blog post, how it has like this by, so in this particular case, we're hiding the, the um, date anyway, but if we weren't hiding the date, then it would show up here as well. And then it says who it's published by. So rather than it looking like a blog post and having the right sidebar and everything else, we wanted it to be more streamlined and like a regular page. So in order to do that, we actually use the wrapper. Um, we use the dynamic wrapper setting in IDX Broker. So if I go to IDX Broker itself, there's a spot here under, when you log in, it's under website, wrappers, and then there's something called global, and then we use dynamic. 
So what we do is we actually build a page on the website itself that contains specifically this little piece of code, the start and stop code, so that no matter what changes we make on our website in the header and the footer and the navigation and so forth, that will carry out through our actual IDX broker served pages. So um, what we have again is we just build the page in, IDX, in, in our WordPress website and then we use whatever that URL is in this, uh, in this setting here. So there's a full, if I go to idxbroker.com and I click on the um, knowledge base is what it's called. So let me do that here so you can see. IDX broker under help knowledge base and then I type in dynamic wrapper setup. You'll start to see it pulls up here. So dynamic wrapper setup. And then we just follow these instructions. So go to design, go to wrappers. It tells you the different types and then it says that this is the code. Now, here's where the IDX broker plugin is very handy and helpful now. Um, if I were to add a new page, let's say I wanted to actually do the IDX broker wrapper page. I can do that and if I click the little plus sign in Gutenberg now and I want to add a Gutenberg block, I can simply type in IDX and because I have the plugin installed, it gives me a few of the IDX options. Now you'll notice one of these is IDX broker wrapper tags. So if I click on that, this actually populates the that, that div, this div ID start and div ID stop, it actually populates it right on the page. So I would effectively save this page and whatever that URL is, I would go put it in my wrapper management. So that would take care of the wrapper. Another cool thing though, let's get rid of the wrapper. Another cool thing we have though, if I go to IDX is we have IDX broker widgets. So if I wanted to pull in one of the widgets I had made in IDX broker, I can actually click on this. So it pulls up my sample ID and then look, I can select from here any of the widgets that I've built. So let's say it's this one and I can go to uh, I thought there was a preview. There's usually a preview button, but maybe not in this uh, version here. Um, so then I have this, and of course, if I wanted to preview the page itself, I can just open a new tab to preview it. And then this would show any IDX sample. So it shows the sample of what we have there. So again, I like this because then I don't necessarily have to go to IDX Broker, go grab the code and paste it in here. This makes it pretty easy to build out those widgets or to add the pages and those widgets to the pages once I have them built out. Uh, so if we take a look at that and I do a plus sign, we also see that there are, um, I'm gonna type in IDX again, there's a lead sign up. So if you wanted to use their sign up form, you can do that, although we do lead capture on our set and our widgets, the property widgets that we have, so we don't necessarily use that one. Um, there's also the lead login, which again can be built into your template. Uh, the Omnibar search, if you want that just to randomly show up in certain spots on the website throughout your pages, you can add that. And then there's also the Impress Carousel, which again is another option of showing properties. So uh, just to kind of recap, basically we do recommend it, uh, installing that IDX Broker, the Impress plugin to use with IDX Broker. Um, however, we still recommend that you manually do the IDX broker wrapper just to uh, control better layout and have some different configuration options there. So if you have any questions on that, by all means, please reach out to us at team at